Have you ever felt insecure about how to pronounce these verbs in the past? Have you ever said something like, I watched a movie last night or I cooked pasta yesterday? In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the correct way to pronounce the ED suffix in regular verbs in the past tense. And at the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you a fun game I played with members of the Real Life English team that you can also play on your own to practice the ED pronunciation. By the way, in case you're new here, every week we make lessons just like this one to help you learn English without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like a fruiser who says that with our channel, they've expanded their vocabulary whilst being entertained. So join a fruiser and over 3.7 million more learners by clicking the subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. How did you find me anyway? You called me, said you were never coming back. So I jumped on a plane, flew across the Atlantic. Canada isn't across the Atlantic. You're talking nonsense. Now listen, you slipped up. It's fine. Hi. <laughs> this guy says hello, I want to kill myself. Are you okay, sweetie? I just feel like someone reached down my throat, grabbed my small intestine, pulled it out of my mouth, and tied it around my neck. Cookie? <laughs> Carol moved her stuff out today. Oh. Many people, when they're starting to learn English, complain about irregular verbs in English because you have to memorize them. Wouldn't it be easier if the past tense of run was runned instead of ran, for example? However, regular verbs are in a way more difficult because of the different ways they're pronounced. There are three ways in which you can pronounce the suffix ed for the past tense of regular verbs and once you get an understanding of how they work, you'll be happy about finally mastering this frequent pronunciation mistake. So this ed suffix can be pronounced in three different ways, either as a t sound, a d or the syllable id. Now, the common mistake I've seen in my students and learners in general is overusing the extra syllable id. So they'll say the past tense of these words as use it, finish it, watch it, or cook it. Luckily, this does not very often get in the way of communication. So if you don't mind keeping this way of speaking, it's totally fine. If, on the other hand, you're interested in perfecting your pronunciation, this lesson is for you. It's easier to learn when to use id than when to use t or d, which is good because the common mistake, as I said, usually is overusing id. So add an extra syllable only when the verb ends in a t or a d. That's it. Only say id when the word ends in a t or a d sound. It's that simple. With that in mind, which verb here doesn't end in a t or a d sound? Decide, start, vote, wait, advise, need. Advise ends in a s sound, so it's not pronounced with the extra syllable id. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about phonetics or pronunciation, you should trust your ears more than your eyes. What do I mean by that? Even though the words decide and vote end in a vowel, when you look at the spelling, the actual sound that you hear is a d and a t respectively. So they're pronounced as decided, voted. We say started, waited, needed. Let's check out some examples with verbs in the past tense that end in the id sound. Oh yeah? Have you ever dated anyone who's been divorced three times? Hi. Hey. Look, I'm sorry I didn't text you back. I just needed some time to think. This ed rule also applies to adjectives. <laughs> I am so attracted to him right now. <laughs> so, uh, you interested? So remember, only use id when the last sound of the verb is either t or d. 
To learn more about native pronunciation and understand your favorite TV series and movies, I highly recommend you check out our Fluent with Friends course. Not only will you have fun learning with the first two seasons of Friends, but you'll join our Fluency Circle, which is a global community of English learners just like you, where you'll be able to practice speaking together and participate in weekly challenges. The best part is you can try the course for free with our three mini lessons. Just click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up now. The distinction between when to pronounce the ed suffix as t or d is just a little bit trickier. When do we say d or t? Let's start with an easy fact to remember. If a verb ends in a vowel sound, it is always d. For example, played, agreed, argued, cried. So we now know how to pronounce ed if the last sound is a vowel, a t or a d sound. But how about the other sounds? There are two ways you can learn this, either by considering the spelling or the sound. If you want to look at the spelling, words that end in these letters generally take the t sound. Looked, relaxed, stopped, finished, asked, missed, cooked, watched, typed, liked. Words that end in these letters generally take the d sound. Travelled, lived, called, arrived, listened, belonged, changed, closed, happened, googled. Again, notice how some of these words end in a vowel if you look at the spelling, but what matters is how they sound. Close, for example, ends in a z sound, so you'll notice a d. Let's see these words in context now. We'll show you one example of a word that ends in t and then one that ends in d and so on. She looks so happy. <gasps> she looked right at me. Hey, you've traveled a lot, right? Yeah, I've been around. Hang on, you traveled across the entire country and never left a train station? Why would I? So I stopped it and she got mad and broke my projector. <laughs> I thought I was getting better, so on my way home today, I stopped by this guitar store and... Did you, did you touch any of the guitars while you were there? <laughs> I've never lived like this before. I know. <laughs> Are you kidding? Phoebe lived on the street. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three just finished this magnificent Thanksgiving dinner. I... Not true. I never called your mother a wolverine. <laughs> when I called the restaurant, they said she was too busy to talk. You're not the guy that asked for the tea, are you? <laughs> so, Scott asked me to come over for lunch today, and I did. You can't order until the entire party has arrived. Restaurant policy. How are you? I've been meaning to ring you ever since I arrived, but... Um... So, how are things going with crazy? Has she cooked your rabbit yet? No. Wait, did I leave the stove on? You haven't cooked since 1996. Uh, Leonard, wait, no. I listen to your dumb thing. This could have all been avoided if you'd only listened to me. Hope you enjoyed those rapid fire examples. Earlier, I said that you can learn when it's a t and when it's a d based on spelling. Well, an even better, more precise way to figure out how to pronounce the ed suffix is by feeling which sounds are voiced and which are unvoiced. All verbs that end in a voiced sound are said with d, and when I say voiced, I mean sounds that have a vibration coming from the vocal folds. Take for example the word move. When I say it, if I place my finger on my throat, I can feel the vibration, so I'll say moved. If I say like, again, if I put my finger here, I feel there's no vibration, so I say liked with a t sound. Now you do it. Say this verb. Does that sound vibrate or not? Open, open, 
open. It's a voiced sound, so it's opened. How about this one? Try, try, try. Same thing, it's tried with a d. Why? Well, it's a vowel. As we said earlier, vowels take d. All vowels are voiced, that's why. Now, how about the verb help? Help, help, help. Now, this is a voiceless sound. There's no vibration and therefore it's said with a t sound. If you're enjoying this lesson, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson we made to help you master the past tense. You can click up here or the link in the description to watch it next. Okie dokie, now it's time to play a fun little game that you can also play to put what we've learned today into practice. We'll demonstrate it here, just watch. Max, when was the last time you travelled by plane? Thank you, Andrea. The last time I travelled by plane was in uh, February of 2020 when I travelled from Argentina to Brazil and back. Now, Mate, tell us, when was the last time you started a new hobby? It was last month. I started to play football with my friends. Hazy, when was the last time you walked 5 kilometers? I think I walked 5 kilometers or more about a week ago when I went to the park. Now Nia, when was the last time that you watched a really good movie? Well, you ask that question to the right person because I love watching movies. The last time I watched the movie was last Saturday when I watched The Intern on Netflix. Now, Gabby, tell me, when was the last time you exercised? The last time I exercised was yesterday when I played tennis. And now back to you, Andrea. When was the last time you cooked something special? The last time I cooked something special was on Sunday because I tend to have more time to spend on cooking during the weekend. How did you like that game? So that's something that you can use to practice what you've learned today on your own or with one, two, three, or however many friends you want to include. I hope this lesson was useful for you. Remember, only use id when the last sound of the verb is either a t or a d, wanted, needed, invited, etc. Use t when the last sound of the verb is voiceless, meaning there's no vibration here, or when there are any of these sounds, for example, liked, asked, relaxed. Use d when the last sound of the verb is voiced, you feel the vibration in your throat or when you see any of these sounds, for example, lived, listened, traveled. But now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Ah, yeah. Trust me, I've conducted over 100 interviews at this point for Real Life English. So I know what can make or break an interview. So in this lesson, I'll share with you tips and strategies that you can use to pass your next job interview in English with flying colors. So watch until the end if you want to learn the most common questions to expect in an interview, how to answer them authentically.